All right. Um, we had an exercise for Monday, since there was no lecture, and what I'd like to do is go over it. But first, I'm going to put some of these things in context. Because, as I've been saying throughout the, the course, this course, by and large, consists of a bunch of techniques. All right? And part of your job is to sort out, on any given project, what's the best te technique to apply. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to present the techniques that we've done, maybe even look ahead to some of the techniques that we're going to have in this class, and then take that and see what these, what each of these techniques is particularly well suited to do. All right. If we're going to go through the techniques, we could, we could score it several different ways, but I'm going to focus on client-side stuff. And server-side stuff, first of all. That's going to be our two broad categories. Under client-side stuff, we had fluid grids and fluid media images, etc. It's one of the techniques that we, I won't say we learn that, because you should learn that in the HTML class, but maybe we practice it, or maybe we emphasize it more. Also under the client side, we had um, alternate style sheets and media queries. We also talked a little bit about JavaScript techniques. Didn't necessarily focus on that, but we did mention them. And there will be some more mentioning of them as the course goes on. We then talked about server-side techniques. And we um, I'll say server-side responsive code. Let's put it that way. And then finally, there is the separate site for mobile. For the most part, these are all with one site one page, whatever you want to call it. This has the, the client or the, the mobile and desktop are running the same exact page. It just might look different or behave different. With these, we're talking about having two sites. Alright. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, in general, I think everything we're going to do in this class is going to fit one of those. Alright. With the possible exception we, uh, of apps, which is, we talked about a little bit, and we might talk a little bit more about it towards the end of the semester. Let's talk about when these things are good ideas. What do you think, when do you think fluid grids, fluid media, such as images, are a good idea? What circumstances would you use it? What circumstances might you not use it? All the time. Yeah, exactly. This one's a, like, yes, please. <laughs> Really, there's no reason kind of not to do that, regardless. Even if you're not doing mobile development, even if you don't care, even if, you know, your CEO says this, will, you know, we will prevent any mobile device from using whatever absurd comment you want to make. Regardless, this is always a good idea, all right? About the only time you would want to do this if you had a real intricate design that needed to look exactly like something. And even then, I'd probably say, you probably want to rethink that design to use uh, this fluid grid and fluid media. So yeah, that's pretty much all the time. All right? And there's good reason for that. First of all, in general, even before the whole notion of mobile sites and all that, a site that tailored itself to the user's particular environment, such as the size of the screen and all that, um, gives a custom experience and can work better than one that looks the same across all platforms, regardless of like the screen size and so on. So 
responsive techniques, these are just, just good ideas. What problem does this solve, the alternate style sheets? When would you want to do that? You might be able to look out, and this might be all that you need, all right, if you're extremely lucky, because your page would look one way, you know, it's fluid, so it would look one way on a mobile, one way on a desktop, depending on the size of the screen. When might you want to use alternative style sheets with media queries? Multiple columns. Well, what if you have a large amount? You, you can do that with you can do that with mobile or with uh, with uh, fluid grids. Just what if you have a really large amount of content on your on your website that you kind of want to trim down or okay? And you don't really want to display all of that content. Okay. One reason for multiple uh, style sheets is if uh, you have different content. Yeah. Now your answer was I think on the right track because if you want differences in the layout and differences in the appearance, the multi-column thing will take will happen if you just float the columns. There's so a, you don't need, really need to worry about that, but go ahead. There's a website that I that I go to and it's different it's three wide columns on my screen, but when I look at it on my mobile, mm -hmm. there's an option button up there for one column, two column, or three columns. Okay. That's what I was... Okay. Expressing. Well, let's generalize that then, because it's not necessarily the multiple columns, because that can be handled even, even without going to alternative style sheets, but different layout... different appearance. More different than we can simply get with the fluid. Because the fluid allows us to get different looks, right? It will be a three column on a desktop, it will be one column on a mobile. We can get that just by doing fluid grids, right? So it's not just different layout, it's like more different layout, you know, uh, more extensively different than you could accomplish simply by fluid grids. Or different appearance. Like, for example, you don't want a background image on the page if it is mobile. You use bigger links. Your links are proportionately bigger on a mobile because it's harder to press them with the finger than it is to click on them with the mouse and, and so on. JavaScript. We haven't talked about JavaScript, so I'll sort of supply the answer here. JavaScript techniques kind of can be used to augment these things. All right. So we can use JavaScript to sort of fill in some gaps and maybe do something really tricky or, or involved or, or a little bit more extensive still. So, yeah, so that would be like for user customization? Well, that could be, that could be a lot of different things. We could, for example, getting back... Um, to Mike's point, a style sheet switcher would be an example of JavaScript. All right, Not something that happens automatically via a media query, but something where you click on a link that says, do you want it to look this way or that way? That would be through JavaScript. So giving the user choice, that sort of augments this kind of thing. All right, um, I think we saw a case where um, I used, oh, we used JavaScript to display a different image um, if they're on a mobile versus if they were on a desktop. And the different image was just a dummy image, if you remember. And the, the, the uh, desktop version was a full image. The drawback of this technique for different content is you're still going to be loading the content. You're just going to hide it. All right. So we can augment that with JavaScript to maybe not download the content. All right. Maybe not display the content. So we don't show an image at all. Or, or we have a different tiny image that we show. If we know through our JavaScript that it's on a desktop, we then go and we swap out the bigger image for it. So that sort of augments, it soups up those things. So would you use like uh, <clears throat> almost like a uh, media query with JavaScript? The JavaScript can detect like what size. Uh, yeah, if you remember uh, the example I had, I think it's something, it's something like second example for 9.4. 
or something like that. I have code that um, looks at the width of the screen on load, um, or it does something on load. It might, maybe looks at the width of the screen, maybe looks at something else. And then based on that, it either puts in the small image or it, it uh, displays the bigger image. Yeah. So that's similar to a user, uh, a, a, a media query, uh, in the sense that anything that the browser's DOM can tell us, we can use against it. <laughs> Uh, anything that we can find out from the DOM, we can use it in our scripting. And width would be one example. All right. So JavaScript techniques can kind of augment these and kind of do some things that these can't do on their own. Server-side responsive code. That's what your, um, I don't want to say project activity was for Monday. All right. We had something that was done this way and said, so let's do it this way. And this is what gave gave me the idea to talk about this because you might be saying like why do I need to know six different ways to do this thing you know isn't one way enough well we're going to talk about for this project who knows what the best way to do it it's probably the best way to do it was the first way that we did it all right but by studying the differences between these we can analyze and we can say well when would it be appropriate to do this all right what does server-side responsive code allow us to do All right. Not download the class stuff back and forth. Right. That's all true, but let's focus on what it what it means for us as looking at desktop versus mobile. And you hit it right on the head. Server side is good when there is different content. And this sort of trumps. the alt CSS version because we're not done downloading it to the client. So if you remember, if we're downloading, if we have an image on a page and we're simply hiding it, we're still downloading that to the client if we're hiding it through our CSS. So yeah, we can make the page look different and have different content in it. But the cost of that is that we're downloading that. All right, and we're hiding it. So we're still using the bandwidth even though they're not seeing it. Now, that might be a big problem or that might be a little problem, right? It depends on how much content you're hiding. If you're hiding, you know, a paragraph of text, well, who cares? That's, that's negligible. If you're hiding a photo gallery with 65 images in it, then it probably does matter. Yeah? If, if I know server-side scripting, I would never want to use the CSS, would I? I mean, when the, the server... You asked that question the first or second day of class, so what was my answer then? I don't remember. So. Okay, what was my answer then? Is that statement true? No, it's not true. Why not? Well, because you're still going to use fluid grids and fluid media. You still might have media queries oh. to tell for the CSS. All right. You still may just have tiny differences in content that you could put into your CSS and HTML. I wasn't thinking of Fluid Grid, but I was thinking of the different style sheets. Wouldn't I just want to run that off the server? Why wouldn't I want to just run it off the server and not download it? Um, why would you, why would you still use alternate style sheets? Yes. That's uh, even though you could do a server side? Because it works. Um, and and server-side scripting, how do I want to say it? That's not what server-side scripting really improves. All right? Um, because if you think about it, look at it this way. All right? If I have, if I'm designing a page, Let's forget about the method I'm going to use to, to, uh, to deliver the page. If I'm designing a page and I'm using the principles of progressive enhancement, all right, then I'm going to think about two style sheets, let's say. 
Or I could think of n style sheets. I could think of three different style sheets, depending maybe on some other parameters. All right. I'm going to think of the bare bones, and I'm going to think of, the, of, let's say, the full version of it. If I'm going to style that, I would just as soon create two CSS files I can go and test, and then you simply switch between them. Now, whether you switch using media queries or switch using server-side code to look at it, tell if it's mobile, eh, who cares? You still have the two, the two style sheets. So I'm going to use two style sheets regardless of that. That's, again, that's not really where the win comes in. The win comes in on the server side in that you can um, control what content gets delivered. So if it's not visible, you can just not send it to the client, which and that's the real big win. You could probably write some server side code to do some testing and to dynamically create a CSS, I won't say file, but a CSS rules, depending on server-side parameters. Typically, that's not the way you do it, just for testing purposes and, and for that. So, yeah, you could, but, you know, it's one of those things that, like, um, how do I want to say it? The right tool for the right job. This handles that aspect and does a good job handling it. So let's not worry about that. We got that one under control, all right? What we need help with is this one. The fact that we're going to show different content on that. That's where we can really get a win. This, if we spend a lot of time doing that, it would probably be more complicated to develop. It might do the same thing. But why put the effort there? Put the effort here into, um, into getting a big win. Yes? So the ultimate style sheet is like you're still changing the, like if you want to change the design and the, and the look of <coughs> But the server side, if I'm getting it, is, is changing the content, right? Yes. It's two different things. We're talking about design and content. It's two yes. totally different things. Okay. The other thing, too, and for getting practical considerations uh, for a second, and thinking theoretically. The theoretical part of me says server gives content, client determines appearance. All right? So if I have a choice of where to do something, Appearance, that's the client, that's that's the client's job because the client might want to display it any way we want to. Take for example, if someone has, because they're visually impaired, a style sheet, all right, that is um, a style sheet that is uh, built into their browser, for example. People do that. If you're visually impaired or colorblind, you can actually put a style sheet in your browser to do certain things. Well, that's appropriate. That's the client's job to do the displaying of it. The server's job is to, 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 to provide content, and the client then can go and style it however it wants to. All right. Now, we can do some of these things. You are correct in saying that. But probably best left to client. For all the reasons that I described. Now, it then becomes a question of would I ever use alternate style sheets to display different content? Maybe. Under what circumstances? What if it wasn't such a major change? What if it was a wasn't, major that, change? wasn't that big of a, uh, of a variance like between buttons. Pardon me? Buttons, maybe. Or like a picture here, or a paragraph, or a comment there, right? Oh, a paragraph. The CSS not a paragraph. Why not? Experience yeah, I, well, why, you know, if you can hide one thing, why can't you hide something else? Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. At any rate, if it's a trivial difference, <coughs> you might want to still do it that way. If it is not a trivial difference, you might want to do it that way. All right. 
Lastly, when would you ever go and cross the line and go to two separate sites? We could almost guess, right, as we're moving further that way, yes. Yeah. In other words, if there were huge content differences. What if there was a large amount of data, like, content, though? Because like, there's, I've seen websites that have two separate sites, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much the same data, but there's just so much of it that I think that maybe they just feel more comfortable structuring it differently, like, for, uh, like a, in almost like a native way. I don't know if that's the right word. If you go to ESPN.com, they have so much content, and if you go to, to their mobile site, it's the same content, it's just really structured differently. Is it entirely the different? It's a totally, it's... Is like, it entirely the same content, rather? It's not entirely. Different. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's one part. Um, huge content differences, huge... How do I want to say this? Um, Website structure difference. Is eBay and Amazon different? Pardon me? Is eBay and Amazon different from a uh, smartphone to a yes. So if you had huge content differences between this, or your structure was different, in other words, you know, on maybe on just hypothetically with ESPN. I haven't visited their mobile site, so I don't know how it looks like. Maybe on ESPN's homepage you have stories about all different kinds of sports. Maybe on their mobile site your homepage has links to basketball, football. It, it, I know it doesn't, but I'm saying hypothetically. In, the, in that case, it's the structure of the website that's different and not just the content. All right. So if we're going to draw a structure, if we're going to draw a site map or a structure diagram, you know, the, the desktop version might look like this. That might be the desktop. And put any words in there that make sense for ESPN, so I, I don't get a debate on it. All right? <laughs> and the mobile might be structured like this. So it might be less that there's different content and more that that content's organized differently. And organized differently, I guess I mean beyond the differences in the layout and appearance, sort of superficial way that it could be organized differently, and structurally organized differently, like on a site map level. All right? That would be another reason. The bottom line is, when there's big enough differences, you go over here. Because in a nutshell, you probably, all right, notice the word probably, could do most sites, you know, this way or that way. But you're going to have a case of, do I want one gigantic, very complicated server-side code to maintain, or do I want two simple, straightforward pieces of server-side code to maintain? All right? And because of that then, all right, you might lean one way or the other way. Again, if there's different content, but like the, the, the structure chart's the same, and there is a huge difference in the content, but maybe on the mobile we show the top five news stories, whereas on the, uh, and we're talking about ZSPN site now, not ESPN, so I know how that one works, because it's, it's my site that's in development now. But, um, uh, <laughs> um, Maybe there's five stories instead of 20 stories on the home page. Well, that's not that huge of a difference, right? It's probably a big enough difference where I wouldn't want to download all 20 stories and hide 15 of them. So I probably wouldn't want to go that way. But it's not that radically different. And it's not like, you know, my structure chart is way different or I'm showing different kinds of content on these pages or whatever. 
It's also possible that somebody just decided in an office that they wanted to do absolutely, and the, and the content is the same, and there's no big difference. In the a absolutely, it, you know, it could be a matter of practice. Right. It could be they have a mobile development team and a desktop development team. Yeah. All right, and and yeah, so I mean. Uh, almost any time we can we can talk about options for doing things, you know, there are um, environmental reasons or organizational reasons that could trump. Good idea. I mean, we could sit here forever and debate uh, whether it'd be better to develop uh, a, a JSP site or an ASP.NET site. And if the CIO says we're Microsoft uh, Microsoft shop. Well, that answers your question, right? You got your answer there. Or if your CIO says, I hate Microsoft, we're running Linux, then you got your answer there too, right? So could be good reasons, could be bad reasons, could be, again, leveraging the skill set that, that they have in an organization, and so on. So uh, that's a good point. It's something we always got to consider is that sometimes there are um, extenuating circumstances to sort of trump any of these kinds of things. Now, let's fill in some of the things that we're going to do. And keep in mind that two sites is really simply this times two. <laughs> All right? So anything I put under there, we can also do here, too, because this really is just two of these. All right? What are some other things that we're going to add to the equation here? One of the things we're going to add is something called Werfel. That's a U. And I'm going to have to look to see where I want to cover this. I might, I might cover it next, or I might cover it later on in the term. What WERFL is, is a way to get more detailed information about the client on the server end. In other words, for this responsive code, this depends on the user agent that is sent to the server. Well, someone created a nice little database of user agents that we can plug into and we can look and we can say and determine, is that a phone or a tablet? What is the maximum screen width of this? Um, does this have a GPS? Does it, and we can put in all these different checks. So instead of the binary mobile desktop, like we're doing now with our user agent detection, we can get a lot of information about the client, and then we can customize the page even further. All right? So we can, for example, <coughs> if we know that we're dealing with a phone instead of a tablet, which doesn't have a phone on it, we can go and we can make a link be a telephone link. So when you click on it, it calls. So we'll do this, and that lives on the server side. That's something you couldn't really do client side. All right, the client doesn't have the resources for this, but the server does. All right. Um, another thing we can do is we can do some IP detection to give some approximate idea of where the person is. That's not really relevant for mobile, except to say that we can also do geolocation on the client side using the GPS that's going to be more accurate than using the IP address. The GPS will tell me that I'm in this room at Lorraine Community College, all right? A uh, IP detection will tell me that I'm in Elyria, all right? Is that important? Is that difference important? It depends what you're doing, right? If I'm doing, uh, you know, directions to somewhere, then yeah, it probably is important. If I'm showing a list of computer repair places in the area, it eh, probably doesn't matter that much. So it, again, it all depends on specifically what you're doing. You like to do that. Like, it's big for advertising. I know websites too. Like at least being able to find where the person is. So you can, like, more Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, depending on the specific need, maybe IP detection is enough. Now, here's another monkey wrench in here. All right? You got to remember that 
the issues, for example, with IE and media queries. You also have to remember that there are issues with 